This is a one-off short video about some essential repairs to a small steam plant. I was sent this steam plant recently by a customer and the customer said, although it looks okay, it doesn't work and the little wheel doesn't go around and the engine doesn't run. It's very much a steam toy with a brass boiler and it has a very nice solid fuel holder and an opening fire hall door and if you look at the quality of the work, it's very good indeed. What I'm doing at the moment is just noticing that there's some melted plastic on the boiler. But apart from that, everything on the boiler looks good. Turning the boiler round, there's a tap at the back. This is either a water level test cock, or it's a drain cock. This is very useful for testing the boiler and the engine, because I can put some compressed air into the tap. Before I do that though, I will have a look at the engine. This is quite a novel construction. It has a crosshead guide built into the cylinder, which is better than just having the piston rod oscillating the cylinder all the time so it should wear well. The engine turns over very freely, and it's quite a nice thing, it looks very well made. So time to connect some compressed air to the boiler, open the tap, and see what happens. Hmm, nothing. Yes, the customer's quite right, the engine does not work. Is there a blockage in the pipe? No, I don't think so. I don't like the noise it's making, and the main regulator valve on the boiler is leaking badly. But even with the valve leaking like this, there should still be enough pressure to operate the engine. A good thing about oscillating cylinder steam engines is, depending on which side you input the air or steam, the oscillating cylinder engine will either rotate in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Connecting the air supply to the exhaust proves that there's nothing wrong with the engine. The first thing to do is to simply unplug the chimney and put it in a safe place so that I don't mark the paint whilst removing the components from the top of the boiler. The first part to look at is the safety valve. I did notice that when the air supply was connected to the boiler, quite a lot of air was escaping from the safety valve. Now I know a safety valve is meant to do this, but only when it reaches a certain pressure. This was letting the air escape at a very low pressure. The safety valve will be the first thing to look at, closely followed by this steam tap, which doesn't seem to do very much. The handle spins freely on the shaft. And as you can see, the entire steam manifold is very loose. So the first thing to dismantle is the safety valve. Inside a safety valve there should be a central shaft fitted with a stainless steel spring, used to press a stainless steel ball against the seat. But the main problem as far as I can see with this safety valve is it doesn't have a ball. It is devoid of the stainless steel ball. So every bit of the steam generated is just going to be dissipated into the atmosphere. Like most of the steam parts that I buy, I buy them from Blackgate's Engineering, and these are no exception. These are stainless steel balls, and as you can see, when I put a magnet near them, they're not really very magnetic. The smaller ones are slightly magnetic, but when I put a ball in the centre from a ball bearing, which is a normal steel ball, it looks the same, but see how much more magnetic it is. The magnetic field is a good way to test for the different kinds of stainless steel. It's most important not to use a ball bearing, because it will go rusty, then it won't work at all. This clip shows me reassembling the safety valve, with the new stainless steel ball fitted. And in order to test the valve, I've connected my airline to it, to see what happens. And it's still leaking, it's leaking all the time, nowhere near as bad as before, but it's still leaking. So the stainless steel ball is not seating properly on the hole in the bottom of the valve. So I'll have to do something about this. This is a ball bearing, not a stainless steel ball. Do not ever use the ball that you're going to use in the valve to do this. And don't do this either. This is an old bolt. The idea is that you tap the ball onto the valve. I'm using a piece of brass bar that is just the right size to go into the hole. And a single sharp blow with a small hammer makes an impression in the seat at the bottom of the valve. So then I reassemble the valve with the correct stainless steel ball and reconnect the airline. Everything now seems much better, but the only problem is the valve only blows off at about £100 per square inch and this is no good at all for a small brass boiler on a toy steam engine. And this of course is far too much pressure for a small toy brass boiler. I need it to blow off at around £20 per square inch. This stainless steel spring was far too strong, so I cut it in half, and then I refit the whole assembly back together and reconnect the airline. But when I reconnect the airline, although it's better, it's still not blowing off at a pressure that I require for a small brass boiler. If it was a copper boiler, 
with an oscillating cylinder engine, I could possibly let it blow off at 50 psi, which is what it's currently doing, but for a small brass boiler, definitely not. What I needed to do was counterbore the top cap, and then the spring can fit up inside the top cap a little bit, because I do not want to shorten the spring anymore. When I screw it all back together and put the compressed air line into it, the valve is now blowing off at around 20 pounds per square inch, which is the correct pressure range for a boiler of this type. Now that the safety valve is fixed, it's time to fit it back onto the boiler. I'm using some Loctite 542 thread sealant to make sure there are no leaks. And here I'm tightening up the bottom lock nut to lock the valve in place. Time to connect the air supply to the boiler and see if it works. And indeed it does, it runs quite well. It's a bit of a rattler, but then again it is going at too high a speed. It's a good bit quieter when I drop the pressure with the valve on the compressor. A quick word about lubrication. Between the boiler and the steam engine, there is no lubricator. On an engine of this size and working pressure, the water does the lubrication, because the steam isn't very hot, it's called wet steam. But what I'm doing is showing a method of lubricating the cylinder by putting some oil into the exhaust pipe and then rotating the engine in the opposite direction to the way it normally runs. This will suck the oil through into the cylinder. Using wet steam as a lubricator for an engine only works at very low pressures. That's why it's vital that the safety valve doesn't let the pressure go any higher than 20 psi. The higher the pressure gets in a steam boiler, the hotter the steam is, and it would just damage the engine if it was too high a pressure. I need to remove the steam turret from the top of the boiler, but these are not normal steam unions. What you have to do is remove the engine and spin the whole assembly around and around and around and unscrew everything that way. At this point, I'd like to apologize for being covered in paint. I have been painting. So once I spun the engine round about a dozen times, I could remove the turret entirely and have a look at what's going on with the tap. And this clip shows the problem. The main handwheel has broken off the handwheel boss. It was machined quite close to the edge. And someone's had a go at trying to fix this by using car body filler, which doesn't work, of course. All I did was clean up the inside surface of the handwheel, and then I silver soldered a 5BA nut into the centre of the handwheel like this. After which I cleaned up the handwheel on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, followed by giving it a quick polish and refitting everything. As this next bit is a very simple process, I'll speed up the video. I use Loctite 542 on all the threads. First of all, I refit the main turret. It's quite important to make sure that the turret is in the correct position, so I'm just checking this and tightening up the lock nut to hold it there. The next thing is the valve goes in place, and finally I refit the engine, and then I bolt the engine down to the bed plate, and we're nearly ready to go. I'm refitting the chimney just to make the plant look better. With the compressor connected, it's now blowing off at 20 pounds per square inch, and I'm opening the tap. This of course lets air to the steam engine, and you will notice that there are no air leaks anywhere. And the hand wheel on the valve works okay, so I can regulate the speed of the engine with no problems at all. I'll just leave it running for a few moments so you can see it running at different speeds. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.